Hey, welcome to Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. This is the first podcast I'm recording for 2024. And I wanted to do a little introduction to explain what I'm doing over the past, over the next two episodes. So over the past three or four months, I've been doing a ton of research about writing a book. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to write a book, but I had a couple of clients come to me with wanting help, uh, they have written books and they wanted to market their books. And so I kind of got into this world of book writing. And so I did all of this research and I met a lot of amazing people. And I interviewed two people because I wondered if you, as a a person who's been in your industry for a long time, who has a lot of nuanced understanding, a lot of knowledge, a lot of training, probably, uh, if you might want to bring a book to life this year, or maybe the year after, but maybe like you've been thinking, like, I really should turn what I know into a book. So I interviewed two different people. So the next two episodes, I wanted to kind of give this introduction, because who you're going to meet today, Annie Schiffman, is a marketing and media specialist. But she wrote a book all about how to use social media very simply. It's called Simple Social Media. And so in my interview with her, I talk about what is it like to be an expert in something with years and years and years of experience um, and that you want to translate into a book so that you can impact more people, uh, have a broader reach, and just basically get your intellectual property into something that you know can have a humongous impact. So in today's episode, you're going to meet Annie Schiffman. We are going to talk all about like why would somebody do this? What is the process of taking your ideas, putting them into a book? What are some things you need to know or think about? And then we actually do talk about her pager method to using social media in an extremely simple way. Annie is a person who has a family and a a spouse and a business and a life. And so for her, being on social media four hours a day was a non-negotiable. So in today's episode, I hope you enjoy. We are going to talk about what's what it really takes to create a book from your intellectual property. Tune in next for the next episode where we're going to talk with a different type of book service provider because the the other thing I found in my research was there's tons of people out there to help you with your book and how do you know who they are and how to choose which one is right for you. So that's the next episode. So tune back in for that one. And I hope you love this episode with Annie Schiffman. She is an absolute delight. See you on the other side. Bye. Hi, this is Jen Liddy. So thanks for being here today on today's podcast. I promise it's going to be good because I'm talking to Annie Schiffman. And Annie has written Simple Social Media. I'm going to dive in with her today about why writing a book. Why would somebody do this to themselves? And what is the uh, the pathway forward? And why would we want to do this? What are some of the things that we need to think about when we're creating a book and publishing a book? And then what happens after we hit publish. So Annie is an author, but she's also really, she's got a marketing firm called Downstage Media, and she's really focused on helping clients create and automate content. And I think this idea of automating content is interesting. I don't know if we're going to get to talk about it today, but she is great at helping people have a presence without pressure, which is, I think, some of the struggle that we have when we think about marketing anything because because social media is so relentless and email marketing can be overwhelming. So Annie is the author of the book, Simple Social Media. And I'm curious about this. And I want to ask her about, she has two daughters with Beatles themed names and she has brainwashed them to like musical theater. So of course I wondered if they were named Ringo and Yoko. (laughs) Right. So they are, they are named neither Ringo nor Yoko. Uh, my daughter's names are Abby and Penny. There you go. So Abby Road and Penny Lane. <laughs> and they, yes, I mean, technically it's Abigail and Penelope, but for short, we call them Abby and Penny. And uh, yeah, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad that you are, uh, that, that we're talking today. And um, yeah, I have this book, Simple Social Media, coming out. And it's so funny that you said that you know, why a book, because I, it dawned on me a couple of weeks ago, like this was optional because I'm, but I've been a little bit overwhelmed the past couple of weeks. And so I just thought to myself, like, this is optional. It's this past weekend as we're recording, this was the New York city marathon. And 
I think there is a lot of similarities to being a marathon runner and being an author. And I say this as someone who's mm. qualified, considering that I've run zero marathons and I have <laughs> uh, authored a book. So I'm clearly the author. Yeah, you're, you're, you've got the clout. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just that kind of a thing where it's, it's a very long road. It's, it's a very long trip that you have to kind of go on. I hate to use the word journey. So um, yeah, the, the reason that I started writing a book was because I didn't think it was going to be that hard. Ooh. I run into this problem so much in my life, which is that if you give me a plan and you break it down into steps, then I'll be like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, no, it's not that hard. Okay, cool. And that's kind of how this idea of writing a book was presented to me. I am, I consider the author Joe Polizzi, who wrote the book Epic Content Marketing, and he actually coined the phrase content marketing, and he ran Content Marketing Institute. He started that. So he's a mentor of mine, and he had been talking about the idea of creating a book from your blog. And I was writing a blog. I had been blogging at the time. So I thought, oh, that shouldn't be too tricky. And especially I had sort of stumbled a up across this framework that I created for what kinds of social media posts to make. Mm -hmm. And I had tested it out with my own work and then with my own clients. And then I spoke about it at a keynote for like a bunch of doctors and it really resonated with them. And then I spoke about it in front of a whole bunch of marketers. And then I just, it just kind of, the idea very clearly had legs. And okay. so I, so I thought that writing a book was not actually going to be that hard because the idea was that I would just take blog posts that I had written and I would pretty much just turn them into a book. I'd read a book that was very clearly copied and pasted from someone's blog, like to the point where it was a hard copy book. And there were like links, like hyperlinks. And I was like, I can't click on these. I'm reading a book. So <laughs> like, the, I was, like the editor couldn't pull those out. Like, I don't know what happened. But I was like, okay, if this guy can get away with this, I can, I can write a book. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the idea. And, but the reason why, besides just overall delusions of grandeur. But the reason why that I, why I wanted to write with the book was so that way my ideas would be able to get in front of more people without me having to get in front of more people. Mm -hmm. Is that my ideas could get in front of more people at a reasonable cost to them. Because initially when I first got started in social media, I was in social media for the performing arts. And I realized that if I served that niche, I wouldn't really be able to earn the living that I wanted to earn. They're just, there's just not that kind of money in there. Yep. But I will always have a love for the arts. I used to be a comedian. I used to do five shows a week in New York City. Like, that's, it's where I met my husband. Like, that is such a huge part of my life and who I am. But I hated that I would have to say to people prices that were just not going to be possible for them. So I felt like I could say, here, get this. Because this you can do and you can implement it. And then the other thing was, I also wanted to do more speaking because I'm so comfortable on stage. Mm. I had created the keynote in the first place with this idea. And I knew that I could serve like nonprofit marketers, like those kinds of events. Or just, you know, I, I'd gone to the National Arts Marketing Conference. I'd spoken there in the past. And it was all a bunch of marketers from a whole bunch of arts organizations, right? So I felt like I could get that idea out there. And if I had a book, I would have more clout. Mm -hmm. And I also knew that just for other kinds of stuff that I wanted to do, other engagements I wanted to have, it would just overall help my thought leadership. So that was the idea behind why I wanted to write simple social media. I think uh, that's what I hear from a lot of authors. And uh, then they get into it and they're, they're like, who, who thought this was a good idea? Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so how long were you in the process of writing a book before you really questioned, like, is this worth it? Oh, that was up until like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. So I'm I, not too. Yeah. Like I have 
first of all, I've always, I'm pretty much, like I'm a one woman show. Until recently, I didn't really have that many people who were subcontractors of mine or things like that. So the idea of, and even when I had studied theater at NYU, it was always like, you can't wait for the phone to ring. You have to create your own experience. So writing the book took me about a year. I would wake up every morning uh, from six to seven and I would write for an hour. And then that was about a, a full year. And then in the summertime, I was pretty much done with the meat of it and I could hand it off to the editor and we could kind of shape it and proofread it and things like that. But then from this past summer, and we're recording this right now, it's the fall. This past summer, I th th then started the whole like actually marketing the book itself and figuring out all of those machinations because I was completely self-publishing. And so, and not only that, but I knew that I didn't want to put it solely up on Amazon mm -hmm. because I also had, I, I had known about a, a publisher, Lulu Press, where you could then sell your books directly on your own site. And if you did that, then in lieu of getting from Amazon or from wherever, uh, you know, a check or whatever that would say you sold X amount of units. Mm -hmm. I would see you sold this amount of units to this person and this is that person's email address and this is that person's shipping address. And I felt like that was really valuable information. Yeah, I want to talk about that for a second because I think a lot of authors don't stop to think about what happens when you sell books versus what happens when you know the person you're selling the book to and have their information. So can we unpack why that's so important for people if they're not, if, because they're authors, but they might not be thinking like marketers. Right. So that is a huge reason behind why I wanted to. So the book Simple Social Media is only available on simplesocialmediabook.com for a certain amount of time. And then after a few weeks, then I will open it up to Amazon and bookshop.org and barnesandnoble.com and things like that. But I wanted to get all of that data. I felt like for the same reason why it's important for me to get email subscribers as well as social media followers, right? Because one, I have a little bit more control over than the other. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to make sure that I knew that if somebody bought 25 copies of a book, I want to know what that person is using for. I, I want to know, do you want, I can come and speak to your group. Let's do a workshop. Let's partner together. What do you need? Who is this for? Tell me more. So that way I know how to, I can serve you better. And then once I find that out, then it's like, oh man, you're going to need this worksheet and let's turn this into a workbook. Like let's really serve you what you need. And I'm going to know that way better if I actually know who the person is. I love that you keep using the word serve because I feel like people who are uh, writing books for the reasons that you wrote your book, right? To have a bigger impact, to reach a bigger audience, to be able to serve people who maybe aren't at the um, financial level that they might be to, that they might need to be to have higher level services with you. They're very mission oriented authors. And so this isn't about being nosy and it's not being about like about being, uh, you know, taking data for the sake of dating, taking data. You keep saying it's because I can serve them better. Yeah. I think exactly. that's just an I important mean, thing, mindset shift for people. Completely. Because then you just think to yourself, okay, well, what else can we do together? Yeah. Let's do something cool together, right? What else can we do? So here's an example, right? So the book, Simple Social Media, is made out of that keynote that I gave, right? So I turned that keynote into a webinar. And so I then do this webinar now four or five times a year, Simple Social Media. Um, so I now have a giveaway during my webinar. Somebody can get the book, right? That's kind of a fun thing that I can do. And I'm having a launch party for the book. I'm doing a virtual online launch party. And we're going to have games because like in the book, I talk about a dice game that I created to help you make posts faster. And I'm going to use some of my improv comedy background. My husband's an improv comic. And we're going to do some bits together that are based on things in the book. Like it's just going to be a fun night that we can incorporate that together. But I now can give people copies of the book as a prize. Sure. I can also give them the webinar as another giveaway or as a prize or something else that I can talk to you about. And then 
from there, I could say we could do a private webinar for your group. So it just sort of became this thing then that I can really play with to figure out what people need. How can we get in front of their audience at the budget that's going to work for them? And because I just feel like social media has gotten so, so hard. And what is expected of small business owners is, I mean, frankly, it's not, it's completely nonsensical. And like I was talking to a woman owned business in my town. She has a brick and mortar store. She is doing so well. She's got 20,000 followers on Instagram, right? And so I'm talking to her and I could see that she's like a little unimpressed with my social media follower count, which by the way, feel free to look me up everyone. I'm sure you have more followers than I do. I'm sure you do. Um, I don't care. I don't care. My pipeline is full. I have tripled the revenue that I've had from last year. Like I don't do not care about follower count. But anyway, this woman clearly did. And um, so I asked her, I said, tell me about how you know this is working for you. And we started a conversation and then she shared with me that she spends four hours a day creating social media content. And I am glad for her. She loves it and she feels it works for her. And I am, but that's just not the people that I am interacting with. That's not who I'm working with. I, and I was just listening to a podcast the other day with this other you know, creator, influencer guy. 80% of his time is spent on content. 80%, what? How do you actually get your work done then? That's what I don't understand. Exactly. Like if that's your work, then that's your work, but you need to own that that is your job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if that's not your job, then it is okay for you to not have those big, huge inflated numbers. Like that's okay. And I really think that we need to shift that paradigm and adjust those levels because they're just too high. And the problem is that people are like, I'm just not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. But it is a worthwhile tool and it's a great way to play and experiment and be creative and get to know your audience and have them get to know you. Like the same way, Jen, that you started this podcast by saying that things did not go the way that you thought they were going to go, right? Right. So now your audience knows a little bit more about (laughs) Jen's life today, right? So when you're thinking about, um, this is an important thing, I think you're making really clear for you, for listeners is your audience, the per, the person who's going your readers are not the people who are spending 80% of their time making social media. These are the people who are like, who are saying, forget it. It is too hard. I'm opting out. I'm not using the powerful tools that, that are at my disposal. Like they're just opting out or they're feeling completely flattened and overwhelmed by it. They're not getting filled up and feeling excited about spending four hours making a 30 second reel. Which is right, how I feel exactly. That sometimes it feels like. Right. It's for people who are, they have a lean marketing team. Mm-hmm. If, and I'm using the team, the word team very generously, mm-hmm. right? And, or I also was thinking about those organizations that don't have that many people who are necessarily qualified, right? Like I think about if you have children, then you know all of these different little organizations that the kids get involved with, whether it's their sporting event or for my kids, it's always like theater stuff. And so there's some parent who is sidled with this job of like, oh, just do the Instagram account. And they're like, I don't even, I don't know. And so they do it and they do it, they do as well as they can. But then that person, you know, that parent moves on because that child graduates and now someone new is in there and there's a completely new strategy. So the idea here is like, here, just this is what we do. We just do this pager method. Every letter stands for a different kind of content. And we're just going to make sure that we have one of each of those kinds of content for each, you know, the five days of the week. Boom. Or, you know, we're only going to post once a week. That's all we can do. So once a week, each one of these letters for the month, right? So that kind of a thing. So it's for people who are passionate about social media who don't care about content creation, who Mm -hmm. just want to get their work out into the world a little bit more. Right. So having your readers, I feel like you, you hold your reader very clearly in your mind when you're thinking about marketing to this, beyond the, beyond the writing of the book, then you had to think about, okay, okay, shit, I need to market the book. And so you keep, you keep holding that reader very clear in your mind. And I'm just curious about When it came time to marketing, now you do own a marketing agency. So I'm wondering like what your edge was having that. 
but tell me, let's talk about like what the marketing of the book has been like for you. Have you been having fun with it? Or was it something like, oh, fuck, I have to do this now? Or where were you when you were, when you were like, now it's time to go sell it? Well, so it's very intimidating because, you know, you have your, it's a book about marketing and you have to market it and mm -hmm. you have a marketing company. So <laughs> all of those things mean that you got to have your A game. And so I, so one of the things that I realized was what I could and what I couldn't do. And then what I could and what I couldn't afford to outsource. Ooh, interesting. So I knew that I, so a website, right? Like I can build a website, that's fine. But I just knew that I wasn't gonna be able to build a website and an email series and social media posts. Like I wasn't gonna be able to do all of that in from six to seven, um, from the summer until the fall when it came out. And I knew that I wanted it to come out by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And so once I saw that very clear day in my mind of when I knew I wanted to come out, I just started looking at all the different pieces. And I started with the two different pieces that my firm does, which are email and social. And so I kind of started there, but I knew that I had to have a website, obviously, because I was gonna be selling it through the website. Oh, that yeah. was the whole plan. <laughs> that was the whole business model. So um, I didn't wanna just sell it through my own um, firm because I do think that there's some things that I do as Annie Schiffman, like if you hire me as a speaker or something like that, and so then there's Annie Schiffman, there's Downstage Media. So I felt like if I do it through Shopify, then I can integrate it with all of these. Oh, and nice. I could really serve then simplesocialmediabook.com and really have like just the very clear stuff that you need to get the book and to get the free resources that are going to go with the book and all the bonuses that you would get if you get it from me versus Amazon, right? Like I could just make that really simple without all of the other bells and whistles of the other sites. So I, I love, I mean, I love working on that stuff. Like you asked me what, if, if it felt like a burden. No, I love doing it. I love creating things. I love writing stuff. I love sitting in my little office doing this. I love collaborating with Jennifer Barden, who made the website for me. And we also did this fun thing. This was optional, but I'm so glad that I did it. And it was really fun. I'm trying to think if I have one here. I don't. But, um, so, the pager method, obviously pager is a 90s communication device. Oh yeah, I, I saw that on your website. Yeah, so it's, um, the whole idea is we're going back to simpler times, mm -hmm. simpler communication times. And also I had heard the song where Taylor Swift says, I come back stronger than a 90s trend. And I was like, if Taylor Swift says it's trend, I'm doing it. And this is before even like all the Eras Tour stuff happened. So um, I decided that, I would create a zine, which is like a magazine, but in the 90s, it's what like Riot Girl feminists would make about their favorite Riot Girl feminist bands. And so I was like, I'm gonna make a zine because those purposely looked DIY, because mm -hmm. they were, and mine will be DIY, because it will be, And I, but I knew the value in also having some kind of a, a print thing to promote the book. And so I felt like this would be a fun cheat sheet that I could do. And so when I um, went to a couple of events, then I could give that out. And that was a really fun oh, that's so add creative. in. Yeah. It, and so like I worked with Ashley Folletta. She's um, one of the content creators at Downstage Media. And she's so smart and she's so talented. And so we made this really, really fun. And like I created a playlist. So all the songs that are referenced <laughs> in the book, <laughs> every song that's referenced in the book, and there are a, a number of them. I made a playlist for that too. So like you could get the pager method mixtape. So I just <laughs> had, I was like, what else? What else could we do to make this experience more fun and more theatrical mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yeah, and more interactive. And so I just started playing with different ways of doing that. And so then that experience became so fun. So marketing the book became very fun. Were there I mean, some of those things are extra and above and beyond, but they just made some of the drudgery of writing, you know, like writing in the email sequence again, a little bit more fun because I knew that I could talk about things like the pager method. And again, that, that then became more bonuses that yes. I can add into things, yeah. right? So, yeah. so now everyone who attends the launch party, I am mailing them all a zine. So they're going to physically oh have God. something in their hands. Oh, how fun. Right? 
the the thing that I love, uh, this is something I talk about when it comes to content creation and marketing in general, but if you don't lean into your personality, then everything feels like drudgery and it feels like you're either yeah. like wearing somebody else's suit or like imposter syndrome or whatever you want to say. But you started by saying you used to do stand-up comedy, you love theatrics, you love musical theater, you love performing, all of this makes so much sense. But for somebody to adopt Annie's marketing plan as their own for their book would be, if they're like, say, highly introverted or the idea of, um, you know, doing something with music would be so anathema to who they are, like, that's it, it's so important to tap into your own personality and strengths. And I think it's so beautiful that you've just like given us your, you know, like how you did that. And I also want to just say the question isn't how can I do it like Annie? The question is how can I do it? So I'm more like me right. when I'm marketing yes. my own book. Yes, exactly. It's so great. Um, I, so I love your, I love your landing. It's basically like, it's a website, but it's just, it's a landing page. Like everything is there that you would need. You can get your bonuses there for the book. And just in case listener, you are wondering what it is. Oh my God. I've, you know what happened? Can you tell us what it is, Annie? Cause it disappeared sure. when my internet went down before. Yes, it is. So the book is titled simple social media and the website is simple social media So Could just make since it we're talking, <laughs> if we're talking to authors, I just want to kind of give you a little behind the scenes. So yeah. I know that when you, are going to buy something that is not from Amazon, there will automatically be friction, right? You're going to have to put in your name and address where normally you wouldn't have to do that if you're doing it on Amazon. So my goal was throughout this process, how can I sweeten the deal? How can I make it worthwhile for people who are going to take these extra steps? I love that. So that's why I created bonuses. So if you buy it from me, there's only certain things you're going to be able to get from me. And if you buy, if you pre-order the book, there's certain things you're going to get for pre-ordering. And if you, you know, so that's why there was always something along the lines that I was trying to think of and not expensive things, but like, I'll give you a 20 minute session where I will talk to you about what your strategy could be for this. Or, you know, so just little things like that were that's ways nice. that I could kind of sweeten the deal. But then if you're looking at simplesocialmediabook.com, sorry guys, I had to. Keep saying it, keep saying it. <laughs> But if you're looking at it, you'll also see, and this was something that I did because I had um, taken a, taken like a book marketing course because I don't know anything about it. And um, there was the idea of what the bundles are for bulk orders, which you would be surprised that people order bulk, but they do, right? And I hadn't thought about it before, but sure. So if you're going to buy one for each of your clients, so that might be a group of 10. Or if you want to buy one for each of your prospects, that might be a group of 25. And so then what would that look like? What are the extras that I can give you if you're going to do that? How can I make this easier for you to unload those books? And so that's why then I could also tap into other things. Like if you're buying 25 books, I'm going to give you, or whatever it is, I can't exactly remember, so these might be wrong, but like I'm going to give you a whole bunch of copies of the zines because you might want to give out some cheat sheets to people if they're going to have this whole book, you know, like just like little things like that. So that way, um, then I wasn't so much, it's not so much one-to-one, -one, but then one-to-many, which helped me sell, you know, which has already helped me sell more books. There's one more thing I want to talk about, which is beyond the book publishing. Mm -hmm. So you've gotten, um, these these names and email addresses mm -hmm. and then there will be the book launch there's the pre-launch then there will be the launch and what are you going to be doing to continue the relationship with the people who bought your original you know book from the your page where they could enter their information right so they will know when there are other webinars coming up or other events where they might want to go deeper Mm -hmm. to understand how they can implement it because like we've all read books before but if it's a little bit different just reading a book versus actually doing it so this way you can you can hear you can ask questions it's a little bit more interactive so they will know about those kinds of events and then if they want to have their own like how they can reach out to me but then what I'm going to do now is also that 
the pager method is meant to be evergreen. So it doesn't make a difference if you are on TikTok or you are on Instagram or you are on whatever the next one's going to be, right? So that I, I did that on purpose in the like 10 years that I've been in the social media marketing space. What were the things that I could make evergreen? And so what's cool then is to look ahead and be like, okay, cool. So right now, if there's this whole thing about zero click content, right? So how can you get social media posts out that don't say, well, click on the link so you can read the blog post, right? Right. So, um, so I can say, hey, zero click content is a trend that's happening right now. Here's how you can use that with the pager method. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to also putting out more content that way, which is this is what's happening now. Here's how you can blend what's happening now with this evergreen strategy that you've learned. Oh my God, so that is freaking brilliant. I love it's that. exciting to think about yes. that because like that just clicked a couple of weeks ago to, I was like, great, that's going to get, that's going to get me through. And I'm going to keep doing the zine as a quarterly thing too for oh, that. Fun. Same it also keeps, you know, sometimes when you buy a book on social media, it's fun to go on Amazon and search social media books like that came out in 2000. Uh, 2009 or 2012 and like they're just obsolete but because your pager method is evergreen and if somebody's on your list they can learn how to implement with an updated issue or an updated yeah. platform like that's I mean that's freaking brilliant that which is why you're in marketing <laughs> <laughs> well I, I mean it's just but honestly it came out of the fact that when you do this long enough you see that things that you could rely on four years ago yeah, you can't Amanda. always rely on now, but there are a few things. And so if you can extract what those are, and so that's what I did. I was like, I got to figure this out. I got to figure out a way mm -hmm. that every time I have a new client, I don't have to put create a brand new strategy from yes. scratch. I don't have that kind of time. Yeah. So and they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't, they don't have that kind of time either. They don't want that. They don't have that kind of time. Yeah. I mean, I created this during the pandemic. I had a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old at home. Like, my seven-year-old didn't even know how to type. And now all of a sudden, everything she had to do for school was on computer. So I had to be hyper-efficient with my time. And so did everybody else. Right, right. Oh, my God. Except this is amazing, the, Annie. There was a small subset of people who were like, I have so much time on my hands. And I, <laughs> I don't. I was not that person. <laughs> yeah, that was not the people that I was talking to. Those people I did have to mute. I'm sorry I muted you, but it was, it was a dark place. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, follow your content. Um, Annie, is there anything that one last nugget that I didn't ask or didn't know to ask that you think is important for authors to think about? Well, I think um, here's just a little thing for me as far as where some of my money went in terms of actually getting the book just for you to all know and you could take of it what you will. So I did purchase a course to figure out like how to do book marketing specifically because I wanted to just like business book marketing, because I knew that I wanted to use it to help extend my reach. So um, that was an expenditure. I spent money on the website and, um, and like the domain name and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's pretty much it. I did price the book. So that way, um, so obviously if you sell, if I sell it through my own site, I make more money than I do at Amazon but I priced it low enough. So that way I'm only making like a couple of dollars for Amazon. Um, so I, and again, I don't really think that I'm not really in it so much for the book royalties because I think that it's going to bring way more opportunities for me, sure. um, thought leadership wise, but those were some of the main, uh, expenditure. Really oh, and then hiring and then hiring people to create the zine for me right. and then hiring somebody to make the website for me. That's, and then you'll have postage it. too, that you'll have to pay for to send the zine out. Right. To send that zine out. Right. Yeah. And then not even including the time where, you know, you're going to do these 20 minute calls or you'll do a webinar, but it right. sounds like, uh, the last thing I wanted to say, which I forgot to say before is some of the things that you're doing are really relationship building, which I think in 2024 is a vital marketing uh, strategy that people need to like lean back into, even if they're using social media and yeah, digital marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're really marrying two worlds here of like uh, relationship marketing with digital and social marketing. So I think it's, it's, it's fairly brilliant all the way around. That, well, Jen, I'm just, I'm just glad it's brought me to you and to your <laughs> audience. And, you know, I am certainly no, no expert on this, as I said at the beginning, in terms of I've written a book. 
So there are and many not people, but run a mar marathon. Yet. And I've never run a marathon. And frankly, I, I'm, I'm almost positive. I could say I never will. <laughs> you I, and me both. I just don't think that's it. That's just not something I'm interested in doing with my time, especially now that I've written the book. Oh, wait, but can I tell you one last thing? Yeah. One last thing between so many people will say to you when you are writing your book, oh, it's like, it's like having a child. And it's not. I have had two children. And the main difference is that when you are pregnant, that baby pretty much decides to come out when that baby is going to come uh -huh. out, right? Like it does not make a difference if you have the car seat hooked up. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's happening. And, um, or at least like it's growing, it's progressing along. I understand some people schedule their C-sections fine, sure, but, okay. um, fine. But, uh, that is something that when you take on the job of writing a book, that is something that requires a choice every single day or every single time that you sit down to work on it. Like, I am working on this book. Yeah. Whereas when you are pregnant, the wheel is just kind of in motion, you know, mm -hmm. but that nature is a takes very over. Yeah. Yeah. Nature yeah. takes over, but this is, is not, you really need to move yourself, remember through. why you're doing it and yeah. And work yourself through every step of it. So that's something I'm just, cause you're going to hear that a lot. Like, Oh, it's like having a child. And I really don't think <laughs> you're, you're way more in charge of it than you would be if you were just having, just having a baby. <laughs> right. You're just having a baby. It's not a baby. Just having a baby. It's like way easier. No. <laughs> Annie, can you say the book's homepage one more time? Sure. It is simplesocialmediabook.com. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts when you read it. Please let me know. You can find me at simplesocialmediabook.com. There's a, there's a way that you can reach out. Yes. I'm, off, I'm actually on my way to go over and pre-order it. By the time this podcast comes out, the book will already be out in the world. People will still be able to go to that website and buy it. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to learn from it because I can't wait to learn your pager method, uh, both for myself and to share with others um, as like I can use it with my clients. Because I feel like um, nobody needs to start over from scratch again. So if we have a, a methodology that works, let's use it. And Annie, I just want to say not only has it been a delight talking to you, you're so such a delight. Uh, I just want to say thank you for your time and expertise, especially with how rough of an entry it was to get into our conversation. Uh, but you're just such a, a delight. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. Yes. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye.